Um, hi everyone, thank you for joining Money in Mandarin. Today we are joined by Miss Winnie Yu, and she's currently the owner of an online gadget store named One Stop Shop. She's a very passionate advocate of Mandarin Chinese and is here to tell us more about um, her career and business and her success despite not growing up in a Mandarin speaking environment and how you can duplicate her success as well. So thanks for joining us, Winnie. Hi, Alan. Hello, everyone. Yeah. So let's get right into the questions and help people learn what you do. Um, so you're currently in a very competitive niche, which is the online gadget store. And I assume you need all the advantages you can get to succeed. So how does your fluency in Mandarin Chinese help you do this? Well, um, at this time and age, everyone knows that Mandarin is very important and that holds true to any industry, not limited to just the gadget industry. So we also know that in any business, one of the most important things is the supply, mm -hmm. supply of your items. So well, I guess in my case, uh, Mandarin helped me a lot because um, I was able to I was able to converse with my with my suppliers in their first language, Mandarin, and I guess that made me a lot closer to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe sometimes they feel that. Uh, we're on the same ground, so sometimes they give me tips, and mm. I guess sometimes I can also strike a better deal with them mm. because you know, I can understand their language and I can speak fluently in their language. I see, but these suppliers could also speak in English, but they prefer speaking in Chinese. Yes, they can speak in English, but then <laughs> good luck <enough> understanding. <laughs> I see. So. So uh, it's a lot con it's it's a lot easier and it's more convenient if you can just speak in Mandarin with them. Mm -hmm. okay. Also, and I think of course in doing business, it's not always all the all the technical stuff. You you need to build relationships as well. So I guess Mandarin helps you build a better rapport with your suppliers. Well, yeah. well yes, that is true because uh, well sometimes outside of business we. They would call and then they would tell me all about their problems. No, really. <laughs> we became friends already. Mm. It, and I think that me being fluent in Mandarin that contributed a lot to that. Mm, nice. Also, um, the thought of doing business in Chinese is very intimidating, especially for beginners. So, did you have prior experience with doing business in Chinese so that your confidence in in dealing with Chinese suppliers is quite strong? Well, first of all, I did not go into this business because I'm fluent in Mandarin. Mm. Uh, well, I just, well, how do, how, how do I say this? Uh, I'm already in the business. Mm -hmm. And then I started looking for suppliers. Okay. And then I realized that uh, most of the suppliers I'm looking for are in Chinese speaking countries because, face it, mm -hmm. uh, the suppliers nowadays, where, where, where do they think? Where, where do they come from? They mm -hmm. come from China, Singapore, from Chinese-speaking countries. Mm -hmm. So that's when that's when it hit me that uh, I have an advantage over other people because I was you know, I was uh, fluent in Mandarin. Mm -hmm. So do you in, in dealing with them? Um, do, do you have previous training for business Mandarin, or is the normal conversation Mandarin enough for you to deal with them? Well, I did not have any prior training in mm -hmm. business Mandarin, but uh, well, for starters, I just converse with them with um everyday Mandarin, mm -hmm. just, uh, normal Mandarin, and then sometimes when I need to say some business terms, I would say it in English, and okay. if I don't know the Chinese term, I would say it in English, and they can understand. Mm -hmm. They can understand, and then I would ask them, "How do you say that in Mandarin?" Mm -hmm. That way, I also learn from them, and then the next yeah. time, I can I can already talk to them about the business term, about that business term in Mandarin. Mm. So you're learning by doing <laughs> rather than yes. studying for learning life. by doing. Learning right. by doing. Nice. So in gen in a bigger scale of things, mm -hmm. how important is learning Mandarin 
in business or in career because I know that you're a translator at Chinoy TV and you previously worked at a petroleum company where you, you got language premium for in your job. Well, um, well I, how important it is. Mm -hmm. It's very important because um, first of all, you cannot, well, language, it, it, it's something you use to communicate mm -hmm. to right. another person, right? Mm -hmm. So, for example, if that, that, that's like the most basic thing in mm -hmm. and, and relation to whether business or in friendship or right. whatever. So, for example, if you cannot communicate properly with another person, I think uh, that 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 explains everything because, um, well, how can you establish a relationship if you cannot, in the first place, if you cannot communicate properly? Mm -hmm. so, so I think, uh, well, in today's time and age, since um, I think uh, it has to do with China becoming stronger and stronger, mm -hmm. Chinese is only becoming more and more important because mm -hmm. we see in our everyday life that. Uh, we just cannot live without Chinese because everywhere we meet Chinese people, we have mm -hmm. to do with, with Chinese people. That's why uh, I think it's very important that we learn, even if not so fluent, we have to be able to speak in Mandarin, mm -hmm. especially uh, in the Right, right. So taking a step back, um, we we're talk we talk about your business, your career. So let's talk about about how adults could duplicate what you've done and how you learned the language in the first place because it's quite an interesting story as well and I think people could learn a lot because people would think that you came from a Mandarin speaking family like you're totally immersed from the start but could you tell us more of your experience growing up here in the Philippines um, and what is the language environment that you grew up in? Well, when I was a kid, my parents would always speak to us in Hokkien, mm -hmm. but I cannot understand not even a single Mandarin word. Mm -hmm. And and well, when I was in about grade three, I think um, my my dad he started watching. Actually, my parents are very modern. They're, mm -hmm. they're not uh, very traditional mm -hmm. Chinese type, uh, insisting that their children should speak Mandarin. Mm -hmm. But um, my dad, he started watching this Chinese movie. Mm -hmm. and, and at that time, I was like, why are you watching that? I cannot <laughs> understand. Right. I don't even know what they're talking about. I cannot mm -hmm. relate. Right. But then, uh, well, might as well just watch with him. Mm -hmm. but I was like, Daddy wants to watch. I have to watch. <laughs> I don't have choice. Right. Uh, I started watching with him and... um. As time goes by, it became interesting. At first, I was just attracted to the costume mm -hmm. because it's really nice. <laughs> and then, as time went by, it, everything became more and more interesting. And then, I realized that I started to uh, understand some of the words you're saying. And mm -hmm. then, I realized that um, as time went by, I realized that uh, I'm part of this culture, it's mm -hmm. a 5,000 year old culture, mm -hmm. and I didn't even know about it at first, mm -hmm. and now that I know, I I just have to learn more, I just mm -hmm. have to look more about the culture. I just think that it's such a waste that uh, before I don't even know about all this, and then since now I already know, I have to learn more. Nice, nice. So, I, I think you also learned, you went to a Chinese school? Did it help you in any way learning Mandarin? And uh, what limitations did your school have in teaching you the language? My school, I graduated from Grace Christian High School. Mm -hmm. My school is not one of those downtown Manila schools, very mm -hmm. focused on Chinese, Chinese teaching. So my school is more focused on English mm -hmm. subjects. We have a QR Chinese class, and it's even classified as foreign language okay yeah okay. so so i guess in a way it did help because mm -hmm. uh, any chinese class would help but mm -hmm. uh not what made me do anything mm -hmm. it's what the tv series mm -hmm. so the tv series piqued your interest then yes. I, so and your school though it did teach mandarin it, it didn't really 
uh, it wasn't the one that pushed you into fluency. So, will yes. you say that what sort of self study did you do to achieve this kind of fluency? Well, um, well, because that through watching the series, it uh, perked up my interest mm -hmm. in Chinese and then so what I did actually in Chinese history, but then Chinese history led to Chinese language. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what I did was, uh, well, I listened in class in school. Mm -hmm. uh, so I listened in class, and then I did research on my own. On my free time, I would um, browse websites, uh, browse articles. I would read on my own. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes on weekends, I would ask my parents if they can bring me to Bilon mm -hmm. to rent, uh, to rent Chinese series, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So it's. Sometimes also have I also have this notebook of mine and I would list down those um you know those idioms the right. four one and seven right. word Chinese. Uh -huh. Yeah. I would list them down and then I would write the English translation. So I would know, I would mm. remember them what mm -hmm. they mean, how they came to be. Mm -hmm. So from the sounds of it you kind of learn more from your self study than what you learn from school. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, because uh, I think uh, in not 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 limited to language. Mm -hmm. I think in anything, as long as you love it, right. as long as you have interest for it, it's very easy to learn. Because, yeah. or because the interest itself would push you to know more and to learn more. Right, right. Um, it, I guess that's the main motivation to learn anything, not only language. It's your innate innate passion or interest in the subject, right? So, so if do, would you have any suggestions? Um, you you learn your interest was piqued by videos. Do you, do you have any resources, especially online, that you could share where people could view videos, um, see what you watch, and maybe duplicate what what you learned and your experience? Well, there are there are sites like. Uh Chinese counterpart of like YouTube. Yeah. But they can I think they can browse videos on it's called uh Tuto.com. Mm, Tuto I can send you the link. Okay. Sure. Tuto .com. And then there's um TPS. TPS. You can it's an application and it's I think it's very helpful because you can download it on your iPad. Mm -hmm. Then you can watch movies. Right. On, right. And they could get their iPads from you, right? <laughs> yeah, they can. Yeah, okay. so it's, you're right. They can get their iPads from me. Right. <laughs> also, one of the um, newer ones, video a video website that I discovered are my friends from fluentu.com. They, they, they. If I'm not sure if you have have heard of them, um, they play videos because the problem with videos is. When you play videos, then you have subtitles, and you don't know what, how they, what the opinion or what they mean. You have to pause it, and you have to find the dictionary and search the meaning. So what the, what Fluent U does is, they have the subtitles there, but they are clickable. So when you don't understand something, just click on the word on the subtitles, and it will, it will, they will, show the opinion and the definition. And you could save that vocabulary in your vocabulary list and, you know, review it sometime in the future. And yeah, that's another one of the newer video softwares around. And you could check that out as well. Um, so, uh, what would you advise, like, for example, our age, around 20s, 30s, already working, if they want to take advantage of Mandarin fluency in their career or business, how what would you suggest them to do at the start? Like if someone's from zero background or just a beginner, do you suggest them to have a tutor, to attend formal classes, to learn online? Maybe you could share your opinion on this this aspect. Well, I think I definitely need they need to have a tutor. Mm -hmm. That's why. But then they can do it simultaneously. They can have a tutor and then maybe at night during their leisure time, 
they can watch Chinese movies because I think I think that's really effective mm-hmm. and it would help them a lot because mm-hmm. sometimes uh, when they watch the movies and then they would encounter some terms that they mm-hmm. don't understand they can actually write it down and then the next day they can ask the truth or uh, mm-hmm. how do you right. use for it what does it mean right yeah. that's good I think you're coming from the angle that you need to have the interest first so yes. by by w- watching movies it has a bigger chance of making you curious about the language then yes. taking action and having yes. someone like the tutor to help you out along the way right yes that's right that's right mm-hmm. because if if you're not interested in, mm-hmm. in something even if it's very easy to learn mm-hmm. you won't learn a- you won't learn anything you right. won't but not there's nothing that would push you to to know more about that that subject about that uh, specific matter Mm-hmm. But if you, well, face it, Mandarin is a very language, uh, it's a very difficult language. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you don't have that interest, I think uh, it's very hard to learn. Mm-hmm. But then if you're interested and if uh, there's something that's pushing you to learn more about Mandarin, I think it's, everything would be very easy for you. Right, right. So oh, that's why I suggested that they watch the movies. That's so uh, they can be interested. Oh, mm-hmm. this is culture is right. interesting. And they would learn more about. It. Do you have any movies that you'd like to suggest people to watch? Yeah, like. But any, any. There are quite a number of good movies playing uh, mm-hmm. Chinese movies. So uh, they can just watch whatever interests them. For example, if they like action movies, they can just search for action movies. Mm-hmm. Right. Watch. Right. Okay, so thank you very much, Rini, for joining us. And maybe you'd like to invite them to maybe visit your site. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining, for watching this video, this video interview with Alan. I would also like to invite everyone to please visit my online site. It's uh, One Stop Shop Gadget. I would like you to like my uh, Facebook page instead. It's www.facebook.com slash whatsapp shop guide great great so yeah i'll post a link to that uh, on this page and hope to see you soon in our future videos thank you thank you also alan bye bye